Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Tech Hub. We're so happy to see you here. And if you're walking by, there are still a couple of seats, so please join us for something really exciting. An awesome, awesome application that we are thrilled to highlight today. I'd love to bring to the stage to talk about accelerating packaging innovation with 3D printed mold inserts, a beautiful case study, an incredible real life application with huge impact for a brand we all know, we all love, we all drink, we all eat. We're going to talk with PepsiCo today. So I'd like to bring to the stage now the CTO of Nexa 3D, our own incredible Izar. And from the PepsiCo team joining us, we have Max and Tangteet, so I'd love to welcome you all to the stage now. Let's welcome them. <laughs> Who uses stairs? There, uh, there's also a case study available right now on the Nexa 3D booth, on the Nexa 3D website, rather. If you'd like to learn more about this, it's in writing. We've got beautiful quotes from Max and some parts in our booth, 1501. We welcome you all there. Thanks so much, Izar. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Okay. So what do we do at Nexa 3D? Well, believe it or not, we make time machines. And why time machines? Because we give our customer their most valuable asset back, which is time. And now, you know, I'm going to give kind of a quick introduction on how we're doing it, and hand it over to PepsiCo to talk about this amazing uh, application. So, you know, when we started this journey a few years back, we made sure that we place our bets on exponential technologies, technologies that scale over time and that give us the ability to deliver on speed, scale, and accuracy. And as you can see, one of the main components that we're using is the LCD technology, which is at the heart of our light engine, which I'm going to show in, in the next coming slides. And on the left, you can see the trajectory of the parts, speed, and scale that we're seeing today, but that we're also expecting to see over time as we grow our platform speed resolution thanks to this exponential technology that we're using at the core of what we're doing. So the way we look at our solution is from a holistic point of view as an end-to-end -end solution. We have tools to identify the parts that you're interested in, the parts that will make the most sense for you as a customer to print using 3D printing. We can then help you evaluate which is the most suitable material for your application. We can obviously allow you to prepare the file, add support, slice. Then using our printers, and if you go to our booth, you will see our NXC400, NXD200, the zip. You're able to print the fastest speed available today on the market, the largest scale available. And, of course, we deliver washing and curing solutions. And, you know, I've talked about the LCD, but the LCD is just one component out of the light engine, which composes our printer. And, of course, along the way, we had to solve a lot of technical issues to get to a point where we can print not only fast, but accurately at scale and at scale that allows our customer to take it to real life applications that you will see soon. One component is the light engine, the other one is the membrane. The membrane allows us to overcome the forces that the party is you know, seen during the printing process. I'm not going to go into the details. But if we talk about the LSPC as the core technology, LSPC allows you to print at scale, with the uniform part quality across the build plate, with the software that takes you from start to end through the whole workflow, and eventually with materials that are functional, materials that can be used in real life applications. So without further ado, I want to hand it over to Pepsi to talk about this really exciting application.
Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, again, my name is Max Rodriguez, and I'm here representing the Global Packaging R&D for Beverages. Um, my team is in charge of advanced engineering and design, and um, over the past six years, we've been tasked with accelerating packaging innovation, utilizing the latest technologies, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. But a little, bit, a, a little bit about PepsiCo. So as you know, uh, PepsiCo is a um, convenience food and beverages company with uh, $79 billion in revenue and um, over 309,000 employees. We boast a portfolio of billion dollar grants and within one day, there are all, almost a billion products that are consumed. Within my team, for uh, our task is to come up with a new vision for package development. And what we're looking at is envisioning a process that leverages advanced capabilities and technologies that, so that we can fast track packaging innovation. We have shortened this concept into sketch on Monday, product on Friday. Now I know it sounds like a pie trick, right? How could we do it so fast? So I'm going to walk you through the process that we've integrated you know, to make this a reality. So before I get to that though, I want to go through the steps that we took on our additive manufacturing program. What we started is by first envisioning how can we leverage these technologies so that we can radically shorten the development time. And we broke it down into four areas. The first one is how can we utilize rapid prototyping to gain understanding of our uh, and accelerating our package development process. The second is how can we utilize it to take a hybrid approach, utilize bulk simulation, virtual analysis, along with physical testing. How can we actually obtain some learnings and insights on the, on the actual process conditions? And ultimately, how can we fast track availability of shelf-ready prototypes. So today we're going to talk about the last one, shelf-ready prototypes. Now, in order to make this a reality, we really got to interlace a lot of advanced technologies so that we can unlock the gateway to radically fast development. And for simplicity, we broke it down into four key areas. The first area is industrial design, followed by advanced simulation, followed by mechanical design, and then ultimately advanced prototype. So let's start with the industrial design, where we're looking to take a concept through product design with utilizing digital tool sets. Now what's important here is that we have to do a lot of pre-planning in order to get to the stage, right? Because what we're looking to do is bring in, on Monday, our marketing team, our customers and our consumers. And together with the cross-functional team, very rapidly collaborate and go through that iterative design process that normally takes weeks or possibly even months and condense it all into one or two days. And as you can see, that is a tremendous task. Once we're able to get something that we feel it's in the direction of what is solving the consumer need and consumer want, we then leverage our advanced simulation capabilities. And what we're looking to do here is very quickly screen through many of the designs that are coming out of that creative process. We run baseline simulations such as top load, side load, pressure burst, uh, trap impact resistance, so that we can begin to very rapidly narrow down the best type of designs. And all of this is being done with our virtual packaging lab. It's an internal simulation platform that we've developed that is very able to very quickly and rapidly do design experiments so that it gets us into the best optimal process of packaging design. If there's a need, we run even more advanced complex simulations such as line conveying, um, distribution analysis, or vending. And ultimately, we come up with the best design possible for our application. As need be, we could even go do more advanced studies in virtual verification, such as logistics analysis, e-commerce, and vending. 
this is just a couple of examples of the advanced capabilities that we developed internally. So in stretch pro molding, what we're actually looking to do is understand what is the optimal material distribution for that particular design. And we'll run through stretch flow mold analysis that gives us what is the optimal process settings for our blow molding applications that gives us the best material distribution for power. And we do the same for injection molding. Ultimately, by day three, we have come up with the best conditions and the best design that we can then move into rapid prototyping. And here, we utilize our technology, our patented technology that we develop internally for being able to take a CAT and generate a mold tool within 24 to 48 hours. And Tactic is going to walk you through that process. Thanks, Max. So here I'll do a deep dive into our patented modular mold set. Um, what we have here is a combination of subtractive and additive manufacturing. So the aluminum shell here is a universal mold that is suitable for most standard blow molders. We then print out only the um, cavity inserts, which then reduces the material usage and also um, fast tracks the speed for printing. To further enhance the compressive strength for blow molding, we fill the back of that um, printing component with a dental stone. Um, and because of that, we're able to use any printer technology with this modular mold set. Um, the modularity of this mold set comes from the ability of being able to print different sized inserts for various bottles, um, volumes from 200 milliliters up to one liter. It is also scalable up to multi-serve um, sizes for a pilot plant environment. So here's an overview of our current workflow to reach fully functional samples within a week. We currently utilize a SOLIDWORKS plugin that fully automates our CAD generation process. So once we have a bottle design in hand, we import that geometry into SOLIDWORKS and we're able to select the parting line, the scaling factors, and after a few clicks, we're able to fully generate 3D print files um, used in printing. And with this plugin, it's very user-friendly and anyone with very little um, SOLIDWORKS experience can use it. So while the part is being printing, um, printed, we're able to conduct SBM simulation in parallel. So with our stretch blow molding simulation software, we're able to run hundreds of, hundreds of cases of DOEs and we can filter through the results to achieve the desired wall thickness distribution along with the um, section weights to give us an optimal processing condition for when we start blow molding. So in this video here, you'll see the toolkit that is um, designed in development with our um, with BMT. This design is able to accommodate and mate with our modular mold set along with your conventional metal molds. Um, and as you can see here, it's very, it's very simple in terms of mold changeovers. Um, it's very straightforward. So once the mold is fully assembled, um, by day four, we're ready to dial in the process parameters based off of simulation and start the blow molding process. By day five, we're able to get fully functional parts ready to be filled, capped, and used for physical testing, as well as downstream activities such as line conveying, um, bed testing, things like that. So you'll see here the bottle being blown from the toolkit. So currently, the industry standard requires expensive equipment and port materials. It also has a pretty lengthy lead time um, in terms of the overall print time required. And then for each mold set, it only is able to produce very low low volume um, output. With our current, with our technology, it requires very little um, investment upfront for the equipment and materials. 
we can achieve a much faster print speed and we can also achieve much higher volume output, up to 10,000 bottles per mold set. So, with traditionally, it would take us about, let me backtrack. So traditionally, it would actually take us, um, cost us $10,000 per mold set, right? So with our technology, we're able to reduce the cost by 96%. And furthermore, it would take us four weeks or more to produce one metal mold. And currently, we're able to achieve a complete mold set in two days with a combination of all the different technologies that we're utilizing. So with the combination of Nexus NXC 400, um, along with the lab scale blow molder, our patented modular mold, and echo Loctite's peak material, we're able to achieve fully functional samples within a week. Um, but to further complete the final package, we need to focus on the injection molded components, such as caps and closures. So with Nexus partnership with Adifab, we're able to rapidly produce tooling for these components through their freeform injection molding process, um, also known as FIM. And so you see here, the process is we would print the mold insert for the part that we're trying to make through um, Nexus 3D printer and using uh, Adifab's special resin. And then we would fully inject the part um, for normally used, um, the resins are normally used in production. And then finally, depending on your part geometry, you can manually demold it. So in this case, you could just ins unscrew the, the cap and then reuse the mold for um, more samples, or you can dissolve the um, you can dissolve the insert for parts that are more complex, and this gives you much greater design freedom for geometries that are not able that we cannot produce with traditional metal tooling. And I'll pass it back on to Max to close out this presentation. Yes. Yeah, so in summary, thank you for the in summary, we've demonstrated how we can take combination of technologies and really be able to go from a concept, a sketch on Monday to a final prototype, a final fully functional prototype by Friday. But it requires interlacing all of these different technologies. So the first one is utilizing advanced simulation tools. We got to be able to know that what we're actually going to sample can be doable. So we're utilizing virtual analysis for that purpose. The second one is leveraging our advanced patented technology, which is made possible through additive manufacturing, through the technologies that companies like Nexa have brought into the market with high, uh, with, with high temperature materials that can withstand the temperature and blood pressures that we put our bottles in, in operation. Third is utilizing instrumented equipment that gives us the understanding of the process, such as the blow scan unit that Tankip showed you. And four is being able to use all of these new novel materials like freeform injection molding that are truly bringing in a revolution in injection molding capabilities. The ability to be able to do freeform injection is a significant breakthrough for us. So with that, all four elements in place, we can go from a sketch on Monday to a final product on Friday.